just like that my device has now been updated to macOS 26 going into general and software update you can see we still have this page that's existing but from what you can tell in the background there's a lot of things that have changed for once if you look at the banner of this settings window you can see that now the back and forward toggles have been added right there and if we go into the storage just to see how much mac os is taking you can see it's 24.31 gigs and if we click on there just to see how much apple intelligence is taking it's 12.9 gigs if i click on done right there i'll quickly show you something i realized right away because i was trying to get into my settings app but it wasn't available and you can see that there is no launch pad anymore we now have this newly rebranded launch pad i guess that's called apps and when you open apps it actually doesn't open up as a full screen it opens up as a window that looks like this it keeps opening on my primary device but this is how it looks on this device and this is your new launch pad it's been rebranded to apps it seems compact even though for macOS, I don't know how practical that is. And it brings the most basic settings right here for sorting by like name or category or icons right there. And you can always go up and down and see. So the name of macOS 26 is Taho. You can see how it redesigns a lot of the applications. And just to show you some of the apps, if we go right there, I will bring this here and you can basically see how like even third party applications are affected in a way, but most of them still have this like gray border. So you can see Chrome, but then you can see most of the Apple default apps, how they've been redesigned as I move back and forth. It's almost like, you know, an older version of iOS. It reminds me of one of the most redesigned app is image capture. Look at how it looks. It's almost a picture of Apple Park. And as you go up and down, you can see how this looks. It's basically reflected throughout the OS as you move. And one of the new things that came with the update is a new wallpaper, which is right there. You can see this is the one that I have selected. But then the section where you find your wallpapers is the same section where you actually find your screensavers. And look at the liquid glass transparency as I scroll through the different wallpapers that we have right here. You can sort of see them slide back and forth, you know, in the background right there i thought it was actually a bug but it seems like this is a feature that's here in mac os 26. a new application that's been brought over onto mac os 26 is a magnifier app if you open it it basically opens your max camera and allows you to use your iphone as a continuity device to be able to help you see around and zoom into things if you have vision problems in Image Playground, the version has been incremented and at the same time, you can see when you go to the styles, they have added more. So this is illustration. It was existing and sketch was existing alongside animation. But now we have two other ones where it's Jenny Moji and another one that's ChatGPT, whereby when you select it, it asks you whether you want to send it to ChatGPT. If I say cancel and just go to Jenny Moji and undo, then it will continue to do what it was doing before that so more styles and ones that give you unlimited potential using chat gpt in the app section when you press a letter that corresponds to like the name of an application you can see to give you all the applications that start with the letter g and because of continuity and mirroring that i have you can see some of those that are from my iphone are also going to show up and if i was to open any of these basically my um, iphone mirroring is gonna show up and you can see how my iphone mirroring icon looks but you can see we have a new games application if you open it for the first time this is how it's going to look it's going to say welcome to games and tell you what's new and how you can play with friends and all your games in one place and once you sign in you see that there's a splash screen that's going to tell you about game personalized experience if i click continue this is how the ui basically looks it's a bit buggy at the start and you can see if i go up and down it has games that I can continue playing or people or some of my friends that I can invite and collaborate. Then you can see there's an arcade section right there and they have a couple of newly added games right there, including the five that they recently mentioned and games that you can play together with friends. And there's a library of 
different games as well that you see right here and some of them are actually from the iPhone which have been carried over. When I move my cursor on top there you can see it sort of transitions from a cursor to like a triangle or the Greek symbol for change in some a variable or something so you can see it's a little bit weird maybe it's a bug but you can see how that looks as I go up and down. When you open up the app store this is how it's gonna look for the first time it actually did give me like a splat screen or something like that but I had closed it by mistake if you go all the way down you'll be able to see now accessibility supports that each application or developer has added into their device you can click there to be able to see more information on different accessibilities such as voiceover voice control text among others and audio description so irregardless of the app you can always be able to scroll down and see some of the accessibility functions and um, features that the app developer has added and if nothing has been added to say the developer has not indicated which accessibility features this app supports. One of my favorite changes that this update brings is the control center so you can see when I tap here it sort of blends in the background and it's because of this liquid glass theme that they have so it's not intrusive it's just right and it's amazing for me i think the new liquid theme that apple has going on with the mac os ios and ipad os and watch os because now the design is unified across the platform it looks much better on the mac as opposed to my iphone from what i can see but you can see here how the new control center looks now it gives you the ability to also like customize different controls and when you go to edit you can see different controls that you can basically add right there you can see all these empty spots that i have and i can add battery among others and you can always scroll through the different options and there's accessibilities too that you can add to the control center. If I was to change my display from dark mode to light mode using this section you can see if I basically turn on dark mode the wallpaper is dynamic that way and it changes and you can see all my applications as well have changed. Now if I bring this applications or app section you can see how the dark mode carries over. It seems like all Apple applications have this dark theme which is good so maybe Safari could be improved you can see this but then some third party one still needs to re redevelop but yeah you can see how that look but also if you go into your settings right there you can go to the appearance tab right here and you can choose your default settings using this method it will be able to switch by default or you can choose uh, dark if you want clear this is how clear is going to look and then if you want tinted this is how it's going to look you can always basically choose a color or basically if you want to adjust colors and tint your icons and applications accordingly you can be able to do that from this section I think for me I'll stick with the default and whenever I do that you can see there's an outline actually here it really helps you to see the difference between this window pane or the subsection you are in and the other sub menus right there when you have a toggle or a switch that you want to turn off or on it has this long it's like a stretched on this axis the uh, horizontal axis these toggles seem way way over stretched in my opinion but you can see this carries over throughout the system and where you have something you can turn on you're gonna be able to see that change and something that's cool and that has been added thanks to like continuity and handoff that basically the iPhone and Mac support is that we have an update with live activities that carry over to the iPhone so if I have something that I initiated such as an order on my iPhone I'll be able to see a pop-up live activity that I can monitor on my Mac the moment I open up the lead for better continuity. Spotlight search has been improved now it has the ability to deep search application deep search different folders even shortcut actions that you can set up and it has a clipboard option where you can actually view your history of words or phrases that you've 
previously copied and allow you to be able to go back in time and select that so it's good to see that the ui has been updated and it has this cool interface to show you some of the four top things that it can do but it can also search other things such as files messages that are tailored and accustomed to your need because of the advanced and newly added Apple intelligence features. If I open up Safari, you can see that there's a new browser extension pop-up screen that shows up right there to tell you about Safari. Let me just function control C to center this. And if I go to the Safari version, just to show you the one that we have, it's version 19. So that's the one that comes with this beta and you can see the extensions right there and the windows too have been improved if i visit a page such as apple.com right there actually i visited yeah let me visit this page and then i'll go down you can see how it sort of looks this sub menu bar you can see when i drop it down the tab it sort of fades into that it's a little bit buggy right now. The fluidness of it is not that good. And then if I go back, I can go into the browser and view different extensions that Safari has. And there's a few couple more that have been added as well. Finally, the journal application comes to macOS. So now you can continue to work on your different journals or projects that you have. And you can see when you open it up for the first time, it's going to welcome you and give you a pop-up screen to tell you what you can finally do on mac os with it if you're using messages to speak or type to someone who speaks and types in a different language live translation will be able to translate those messages in a few selected languages and at the same time facetime is going to give you captions that are translated if you go into the facetime if you go into the facetime settings and enable that